Hello and welcome to this video on the Kubernetes Gateway API, specifically about the v1.0 release. Now the v1.0 release has been around for a couple of months now. I have been wanting to do this video for a while, but uh, I wrote a blog post on it a couple of months back and now I thought it's time to uh, create a video and talk more about it, more than what is mentioned in the blog post and hopefully give you an idea about the Kubernetes Gateway API and then answer the question whether you should switch to the Kubernetes Gateway API from the Ingress API or not. So let's get started. So let's set some context uh, before we get down to the nitty gritties of the new Gateway API, the v1.0 version of the Gateway API. Uh, most probably like if you click down this video, like you probably are already familiar with the Gateway API or at least familiar with the Kubernetes uh, Ingress API and you have a basic understanding of what the Gateway API is. But let me put some, uh, let me give you some context on what exactly we are talking about. Maybe this is a refresher for you as well. So the Kubernetes Ingress API and the Kubernetes Gateway API are two Kubernetes APIs, which is used to configure how traffic is routed into your clusters. So let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster, which has multiple services running, and your goal is to route traffic from your clients, which are outside the cluster and route this, route this traffic to your applications, to your APIs. And what you have is an ingress, which consists of an ingress controller and an API gateway, typically. So what this ingress controller does is it takes configuration uh, in a Kubernetes native way. That, that is like an ingress API configuration or a gateway API configuration, uh, a definition of how the routing should look like in a Kubernetes native format and a Kubernetes API, and it converts to specific configuration. So in this case, it's API 6 specific configuration and the API 6 API gateway handles uh, all the implementation. So the gateway API and the ingress API are just APIs used to define how your traffic should look like, how your traffic flow should look like, how your traffic should be routed, what sort of, let's say, what sort of weights you want to assign on each route, things like that. So essentially like, there is an implementation that implements this API, which does all the all the stuff, does all the hard work in routing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic of it. Both the Ingress and the Gateway API are Kubernetes APIs used for pretty much the same thing, routing traffic into your clusters. Now, before the v1.0 release, uh, v1.0 release signifying like uh, v1.0 release of the Kubernetes Gateway API signifying uh, a lot of things like uh, general availability, uh, a green signal to be used in production, all of that stuff. But before the v1.0 release, uh, the Ingress API felt a bit more superior. So I wrote a blog post comparing the Kubernetes Gateway and the Ingress API in 2022. So almost a year and a half uh, before. So my verdict was to stick to using the Ingress API or the custom resource definitions provided by uh, the implementations like Apache API 6 rather than using the Gateway API because the Gateway API was not at all uh, mature enough to handle the uh, handle most more, more most of the common use cases that people want to use these APIs for. So before v1.0, the gateway API lacked a lot. Uh, so the API, its implementations, all were very uh, uh, were at their infancy. Uh, on the other hand, the Ingress API was was. Uh, stable for a long time. So people were already using it. There were a lot of tooling around it. It was stable. It was being used in production. Uh, there were a lot of implementations supporting the uh, Kubernetes Ingress API. So all of that stuff was going on. 
while the gateway API uh, made its uh, O.5 uh, uh, release. So yeah, so my verdict then was to uh, was that it might not be a good idea to switch to the uh, gateway API. But now, like with the one dot release signifying uh, general availability and all all sort of stuff, like a lot of stuff is capable with the gateway API. While a lot of stuff is being implemented at the gateway API, the implementations of the gateway API, like Apache API 6, are quickly catching up because they, they understand the value of the gateway API and they are quickly catching up uh, and increasing their support, level of support for the gateway API. So now, uh, like if you came for a, an answer, like you can like maybe pause the video here and like uh, go to something else. But like uh, the answer is this, like should you switch to the Kubernetes Gateway API? Yes, but it has a lot of caveats. And you should only choose the Gateway API if the API and the implementation supports the needed features. So Gateway API is, uh, has a lot of capabilities. But if your capabilities, if the things that you need, if the capabilities you want are not present in the Gateway API, or if they are present in the Gateway API, but are not uh, present in the particular implementation, the implementation has not yet supported it, it might not make a lot of sense to switch to it. But if it if it does, instead of uh, picking up the Ingress API, if you are starting something new and the Gateway API supports all the all of the features you want, it might be best to start with the gateway API. So that's the answer, but I want to explore more on why I think uh, this is the case and uh, maybe go through some of the, some uh, bit of the nuances uh, that are there uh, while making this decision so that you can make a, a bit more informed decision. And you can also get an idea about how the gateway API evolved over the past years, why it was created in the first place, where is it going, and all of the other stuff. So yeah, so stick with me and uh, we'll get into that. So the probably the first question you have is like, why do you need a, the Gateway API in the first place? Like you have an Ingress API and you say that the Gateway API does the same thing as the Ingress API. Why the hell do, do we need it? So what's wrong with the ingress api so yeah like uh the thing is like the ingress api works well but it only works well for a very small set of use cases but it works well so these small set of use cases are usually not sufficient for an end user so they require more capabilities, which are not available in the Ingress API. So they end up using custom annotations, which are provided by the Ingress API implementations, or they end up using custom CRDs, which is nowhere related to the uh, Ingress API. It is just uh, a custom resource provided by the implementation. So, uh, so the end user can still configure things in a Kubernetes native way using the custom resource, but they lose all the benefits of having a standard API like the Ingress API. And that costs, that means like you sacrifice a lot of portability. One of the goals of the Ingress API project was to make this configuration completely vendor neutral. So even if you switch vendors, even if you switch the implementations, or the underlying implementations, you you can use the same configuration. So like that that lets you like have, that that prevents vendor lock in and all the, all of those stuff. But with uh, custom annotations or custom CRDs, uh, you are forced to stick to one particular implementations because uh, the Ingress API is no longer portable. And the whole idea was of, of the gateway API was to tackle these limitations. So let, let, let me let's just uh, take a step back and look at these limitations before we move ahead. So yeah, this is a, a simple uh, ingress resource used to route uh, 
traffic between two services, left and right, based on the path. So as you can see, it's pretty much simple. The only thing that is tied to the implementation is this ingress class name, uh, ingress class name uh, value, which is API six. So ideally, if you want to switch ingress your ingress controller to your ingress implementation, you can just switch out the ingress class name and uh, have a different implementation and uh, set up a different uh, implementation and all of this will work the same. You won't be needing, uh, you won't need to like change any of the other, any other of the, any of the other configurations, but this works well in this particular use case, which is quite simple, just route traffic between uh, two services based on the path. But let's say if you want to do something more complex, like uh, rewrite the paths. So in order to rewrite the path, there is no inbuilt configuration available within the uh, within the Ingress API. So there is no construct. There is no uh, there is no standards way to specify uh, a, a target rewrites rewrites in the in the URI. So what end, ends up happening is you are forced to use custom annotations, which is specific for the implementation that you are using. And in the in this case, it's API six. So you are you are forced to use the annotation provided by API six to define the behavior of that uh, rewrite. Even though the rest of the configuration remains the same, if you want to port this to some other implementation, if you want to use some other uh, ingress implementation, you have to like find alternatives for these annotations and it is not portable by default. And uh, if you look at these like configuring all of these features, like all of these complex stuff through annotations is quite hard. And uh, even with a, such a simple use case, you end up using two annotations. So imagine a scenario like where you want a lot of custom features that are that can be provided by the implementation but are not available in the ingress api not exposed by the ingress api so you end up having a lot of annotations on your on uh, on your manifest files so this doesn't scale it it is very difficult to maintain it is not at all kubernetes native like you are just uh, adding annotations and like basically adding key value stuff so uh, uh, key and values and uh, it is not at all kubernetes native there is a lot but there are a lot of better ways to handle this and one such way is to uh, use custom resources so api6 has defined some custom resources and one of which is called api6 route this custom resource is very is specific to api6 it is nowhere tied to the ingress API or the gateway API. It is specific to uh, API 6 and it is a Kubernetes custom resource uh, that lets you define routes in a more API 6 native way. So if you are an API 6 user, if you are already familiar with API 6, but you, if you want to use API 6 in Kubernetes and manage API 6 in a Kubernetes native way, this is the uh, custom resource that you would use. So. In this case, like if you want to do the URL rewrite, if you want to do the, uh, if you want to do that, like instead of using annotations, uh, like we did with the Ingress API, you can do it in a more native way, as you can see. So basically you can configure, API 6 works based on a plugin architecture. Uh, you can learn more about, about that in the other videos in this channel, but uh, yeah, API, you can basically enable plugins and use a much more readable and uh, simple configuration to specify what you exactly want to achieve in which in this scenario is to rewrite those URLs. But this also has the same problem. This is specific to API 6. It is not at all portable, which defeats the purpose of having a standard API called the Ingress API. So yeah, so uh, the gateway API uh, came into the picture when all of this was happening 
and the main purpose of the gateway api and why it is separate from the ingress api is that it is completely different its goal is to uh, uh, prevent all of these from happening again and i i think it has a lot of potential to be that more on that later but yeah uh, let's look at the gateway api in more detail and some of the obvious benefits you have with the gateway api is that is is that it is expressive so a lot of stuff which you couldn't do with the ingress api like the stuff you had to do with annotations uh, uh, all of that stuff like they can be done uh, with the gateway api and it is specifically built it is specifically designed with such such use cases in mind such uh, uh, common use cases in mind so you can do a lot of stuff with the gateway api you can uh, it, it is much more expressive you can do you can specify a lot of that stuff in your configuration file instead of having to rely on things like annotations and uh, most of this stuff is uh, like a lot of this stuff is supported by the gateway api it, it is also extensible so I, I i don't think like any any standard api can support all the features that the implementations want but the gateway api does something different like it provides uh, standard extension points where like implementations can uh, extend the gateway api uh, so like even though like uh, so it, it is much better than an annotations using annotations to extend things but so like uh, uh, even if the gateway api is limited and the and as an implementation if you want to uh, provide your users with some more features you can use these standard extension points to extend those features the gateway api is also role oriented the role oriented aspect of the gateway api uh, means multiple apis multiple uh, the gateway api has multiple APIs and each of these APIs cater to multiple organizational roles. Uh, so different stakeholders need not worry about each other, need not worry about overlapping each other while working with the gateway API. And as I said, like I have a diagram that that would make this more clear. And uh, all of this means like the expressiveness, the extensibility and the role orientedness, like all of this means that a lot of features that require annotations are supported out of the box in the gateway API. And the uh, great thing is that the gateway API is implemented as a set of CRDs itself. So it is, it does not come with the Kubernetes, uh, it, it does not come installed with Kubernetes. You have to install it. It is in, it can be installed uh, because it is implemented as CRDs, even though it is an official Kubernetes uh, API, it is implemented as a set of CRDs. So this has a lot of benefits. Uh, so it is maintained by the Kubernetes maintainers, uh, but like it is hosted in a different repo and it, it moves at a different pace than the Kubernetes project. So like, the gateway API is evolving quite quickly uh, because of this, uh, because it is independent from the uh, main Kubernetes project. So yeah, this is what I meant by uh, role orientedness. So the gateway API has multiple APIs, the gateway class API, the gateway API, and the HTTP route API. The as an application developer, uh, as an application developer, like you are only concerned about routing traffic to your to your applications, to your services, which are running inside your cluster. You don't want an application developer uh, configuring the cluster for the entire team. You only want the application developer focused within the team. And uh, these responsibilities of managing the cluster goes to a cluster operator. So he, he can do things uh, with the gateway API uh, while the application developer only need to focus on the HTTP route APIs. And uh, uh, all of these can of course like work independently. So each of these uh, stakeholders, the infrastructure provider, the cluster operators and application developer need not worry about uh, overlapping each other. And uh, that makes it 
much more easy to use. So like there is a lot of separation of concerns going on here, uh, which makes it uh, much more uh, much more convenient, much more uh, synchronous, much more congruent to how actual teams working on the gate working with the gateway API, using the gateway API are structured. Let's look at the Gateway API in action. So we had the custom CRDs. Now let's look at the Gateway API. So we can start off with a simple configuration, uh, routing based on, let's say, query parameters. So, so you are an application developer. So if you are an application developer, you will use the Gateway API gateway you will use the gateway apis http route api and you can configure all of that all of that stuff basically if the query parameter has a one particular value route it to one service or else route it to another service so all of that is native and if you look at this entire configuration you won't see anything that is tied to a specific implementation which means that you can basically take this configuration anywhere with any implementation. So if you are using Apache API 6, you can use it with API 6. If you, you can use the same configuration with API 6. If you are using some something else, some, some other ingress solution, you can use the same configuration and it will work uh, similar, similar to what, how it works here, provided that the implementation supports the gateway API. And if you move to something a bit more complex, like uh, rewriting the uh, re rewriting the URI like we did before, uh, which in which with like the Ingress API, uh, which with the Ingress API required annotations, but with the Gateway API it is supported out of the box. So this is uh, an HTTP route uh, resource. And you can apply filters on it called the URL rewrite filter, which you can use to rewrite the URL like we did, did before. And similar to the last uh, last last configuration we saw, all of this stuff is completely independent of the underlying implementation, which in this case is Apache API 6. But all of this configuration is independent of the underlying configuration. And that is what makes uh, Gateway API different what makes gateway api much more capable than the ingress api and it's still at v1.0 so there is definitely a lot more to come but there is a concerning question that you might also have which is that will it proliferate so proliferation means standards increasing uh, exponentially without control so there is this xkcd comic which i won't show you because it, it has been shown like a lot of times so there is this comic which me which says basically say which basically talks about this that standards tend to proliferate so let me walk through what happens in general so in general a standard emerges uh, to unify projects or, or their standards so the Kubernetes Ingress API was a standard standard that emerged because it wanted to stand it, it wanted to standardize how how external traffic uh, is routed inside Kubernetes clusters. So it wanted to standardize the way uh, ingresses worked. So that is why the Ingress API was created to provide to provide a standard way to access Kubernetes uh, services from outside the clusters. So the next thing that happens with these standards is that when they try to fit a lot of different use cases, a lot of different projects under one umbrella, it ends up having limitations. So like we saw before, like the Ingress API was very limited. And what happens when the Ingress API is limited? People stop using it. People think it is limited, but they want to get, get stuff done uh they want to get stuff done but like the ingress api is limited so they will bypass these limitations and 
do uh, things like uh, use annotations, use custom CRDs, which are completely which completely defeat the purpose of the actual standard. So these implementations have different standards. No, they use uh, they use different standards which are not at all interoperable uh, with each other, like we saw. So yeah, each implementation will have their own st st standards. Non-portable CRTs and annotations are an example of that. And we restart the cycle. So now there are multiple standards and our goal is to unify all of these standards. And that is where Gateway API uh, comes from. So this might sound familiar because like this is exactly what happened with the Ingress API. It tried to uh, bring together multiple different uh, standards, multiple different ways in which people were doing things, but in that it ended up failing. And as uh, as a renaissance, at, as a resurgence, the Gateway API is trying to do the same thing, although you could argue that the Gateway API is doing it much better, but still like it can have the same problem. So the question still remains like, will it proliferate? Will I end up having to use some other API in the future? Like will Gateway API become obsolete? Like the Ingress API doesn't make um, a lot of sense now. Like if uh, will the Gateway API also uh, become obsolete? And I have like a really opinionated answer on this. And it is that it won't proliferate. And I have strong reasons for it as well. So the Gateway API already has 25 implementations. So it has a very broad adoption, which is quite key uh, to prevent standards proliferation. Standards only make sense if people are using that standard and having 25, 25 implementations, which is like a lot, already using this uh, API is uh, is a testament to how good the standard is and how it has a lot of potential. The standard also has the Kubernetes Gateway API has al also has levels of conformance. So there is uh, this uh, core level, uh, which means that all of these impl all of the implementations of the Gateway API should support these features and extend it. Um, some of the Gateway API might uh, support this feature and implementation specific uh, conformance, which are specific to one particular imp implementation. So it provides a lot of room for implementations to uh, build on top of while being compliant to the Gateway API uh, standard. So that you don't leave your users hanging, like they are not tied to you, tied to, they are not uh, succumbed to a vendor lock-in. And the other thing is that the Gateway API specification recently, well, recently I mean like a couple of years ago, but relatively recent, recently merged with the Service Mesh Interface project in an initiative called uh, Gamma. I, it stands for Gateway API for Mesh Management. And merging the Gateway API with the Service Mesh Interface uh, specification, which was a sp specification intended for service meshes, it had a similar goal. So it wanted to unify how you configure service meshes and it was an API for that, but it had a lot of limitations. So implementation start, started to diverge from it and now it is not being used at all. Uh, it It is a similar story. So like uh, it is a standard that is no longer used, but uh, it it is being, it has a, it has had a rebirth since joining with the Gateway API project. Now the Gateway API has evolved to support service meshes as well. So Gateway API primarily handles north to south traffic, the traffic from outside your clusters to inside your clusters and vice versa. But our service mesh is more concerned about traffic within your clusters, the east-west traffic, the traffic between your services. So the Gateway API has evolved to support both of these use cases, which I think is really cool, which means that it will bring more projects uh, under its umbrella. Uh, 
and to show its success the the istio project which is the most popular service mesh by far has announced that they will support uh, gateway api uh, in the future they will uh, they will evolve from their virtual services and move completely to the gateway api which means that the gateway api will be the standard way to the only way to configure istio or, or the way with the primary way to configure istio so that level of adoption by such a large project like it's a testament to itself and this could also encourage uh, other other projects both service meshes and api gateway projects to participate more in the gateway api and uh, uh, level up their implementations to support more of the gateway api so uh, a couple of end notes like uh, we let's talk about migration so let's say if you have uh, configurations you, you have uh, defined configurations using the ingress api uh, how can you migrate it all to the gateway api you like it is a what is a difficult process to do this by hand and doing this by hand might be the easiest thing to do because like if you do some automations you are always vulnerable to some issues but the ingress to gateway ingress to gateway project which is maintained by the gateway api maintainer is a good uh, tool you can use so it is basically a cli applications where you can uh, uh, pass in an ingress api specification as an input and it converts it to uh, corresponding gateway api uh, resources so you can use that and of course you have to do some things by hand so you have to you, you still end up doing some things by hand because like because both of these api are not exactly interchangeable they are different so you still have to do something by hand. so if you are looking to migrate you definitely do that definitely check the gateway api's documentation on migration which has a lot of information which uh, uh which i don't have the time for in this in the in this video uh, yeah but uh there are also other caveats here uh api6 and other implementations probably have viable alternatives to the gateway api so if you are not particular about uh having vendor neutrality if you are fine with using uh some open source solution like apache api6 and you don't care about uh using ingress api or the gateway api you are fine with using api specific configurations you can still do that and uh, if you don't want kubernetes native configuration itself like you can do something like api6 standalone mode where you can define all of your configuration in a static yaml file and you just have to manage this yaml file for configurations you don't have to worry about uh using the kubernetes apis to define stuff you don't have to worry about maintaining all that all, all of that stuff is done with a static file and uh, as i mentioned like you can also still use implementation specific crds you can use api 6 route to define your route in, instead of uh, http route or the ingress api so the limitation there is that you are stuck with using that specific implementations implementation but if that is not a problem for you uh, sticking to that is a perfectly good solution because it will it will likely have first class support from the implementations and that's it if you have questions feel free to uh, add comments in the video or like you can find me online on twitter and feel free to reach out we try to have this these webinars these videos live every month so next month uh, if you want to catch this conversation live where you can ask questions uh, directly uh, please uh, find us you can find all the relevant details in the description below so see you